Hi, welcome to The Gun Love. Today, I wanted to do a quick versus on some very common everyday carry pistols. I've been getting a lot of questions from people about what gun they should buy as their first pistol to carry with them. And what I've been experiencing, and even before I purchased one myself, was that everyone wants to get a small micro compact pistol, something that's cute, you could fit it in your purse, something that you could put in your pocket, you know, a mouse gun. However, I don't really recommend those for new shooters unless you're going to go invest in the training and continuously shoot so that you know what you're doing because a lot of these micro compact pistols pack a lot of punch so the other day i was given this very very beautiful six hour p938 to clean for one of these videos that i'm making here and this is your six hour p938 micro compact single action only pistol now it's about 5.9 inches in length 3.9 inches in height 1.1 inches in width about 16 ounces in weight and the barrel is three inches and the magazine that comes with this is this the seven round single stack i took it out to shoot and i wanted to shoot it because my everyday carry at the moment is a micro compact pistol. I carry this six hour P365 and this is my baby right here. Not just because she's really, really cute. And why is it a she? I don't know. Maybe because I roll with my girls, you know what I mean? I don't know. But this is your six hour P365. It's a micro compact pistol. It's 5.8 inches long. The height is 4.3 inches. The width is one inch. The weight is 17.8 ounces. The barrel is 3.1 inches. It's striker fired and the ammo capacity of the magazine. Well, this magazine is a 10 round, but you can get this magazine in a 10, a 12, a 15. After SIG made the P365, they started making several different versions as they do, like just like they did with your P938. They have the XL version. They have several different versions with your P365, but I I didn't want to go and get one of the bigger ones because I do really love to carry a micro compact pistol. It's just enough for me to carry. I can put it in my purse. I can put it in a clutch. I can throw this in my pocket. I can put this on my leg anywhere. And they're very similar in the features. So they're both pocket pistols or mouse guns as some people like to call them, but there are some differences in them. The first is noticeable. The 938, is a single action only. And as you can see here, it has a safety on it and it's ambidextrous. While your P365, it doesn't have a safety on it. When I first started carrying pistols, my first was a Springfield Armory XD9. And I still love that gun very much. Carried it for several years. The reason I really liked it was because it had a safety. Now, I never was a fan of having a gun with a safety like this because I just feel Feel like that's an extra step in that extra second that I, if I forgot to take it off it could cost me but I still wanted to have a safety on a gun and that's why my Springfield Armory XD9 was perfect because it has the safety right here on the grip so that's the first noticeable difference on your six hour P938 this gun is made to be carried cocked and locked or in an empty chamber initially I didn't used to carry one in the chamber either. But when you think about the SIG P938, there really isn't any true, I don't I, I don't want to say there's not any true safe way to carry this with one in the chamber. When you look at the two of these guns, as you can see, they're very similar in size. Now your 938 is actually longer than this P365. I really thought that the P365 was longer in length. Your P365, it's a little bit bigger. Like I mentioned earlier, it has a little bit more height to it, a little bit more weight because it carries more rounds. The beautiful thing about both of these guns is that you have that typical classic Sig Sauer trigger. These guns are both very, very accurate to shoot. The differences for me on these two particular handguns, if I had to choose between one, I would look at how comfortable I am with them. So in my hand, I like the way that my P365 feels because it has I don't know what this is called. Is it called fa 
fingering, let me know. But, you know, it's like a little special grooves to fit your fingers so that it feels right. And I do like that the Magwell has this built-in floor so that I can fit all three fingers on here. As I mentioned in my P365 video, if you're a guy or if you have larger hands, you might want to consider getting the XL or carrying um, extended magazine. For me, this works. I like the fact that I can fit 10 rounds in here. It's a stacked magazine, so it's staggered, right? So the bullets are not like a single stack magazine, which is why this one looks much more narrow. They're staggered here in your 365. So it's almost like they, you know, like they zigzag up into the magazine. So I like the fact that I can carry much more ammo inside of my P365 as opposed to the 938. This 938 doesn't have that fingering, so it's pretty much, it's very straight. And because of this, you know, if, if I had a flush mag, my pinky would be coming off of here as well. They both have checkering. So you have checkering on the back and you have checkering on the front. On the Legion series, they even have checkering on the trigger guard. This P365 has a texturized grip all around. So I like the fact that that it makes me feel like I have more control all the time. I also like the fact that even though these are very similar in size, I can actually tell the difference in my P365. It fits my hand better. I don't know if it's just because of the texturized grip all around with this extended mag plate because it's only 0.1 inches wider than your P938. And the 938s come with the G10 grips. This particular grip was installed by the owner but for me I actually like to have a more all-around firm grip as far as the sights on here all of the newer SIGs have the x-ray 3 day and night sights with that tritium night sight at the front I like the sights on both of these I prefer the tritium night sight because I, I think it's great that it will just boom light up before I clean this p938 I took it to the range and I was scared to shoot it. I was so, so scared to shoot this gun. Why, why would I be scared to shoot this gun? Because I've heard so many good things about it. And I think it was the 2019 SHOT Show that SIG came out with and introduced the Legion series version of this. And the Legion series is really, really nice. This is pretty much already an all metal gun, but with the Legion series, they ended up removing everything from it that wasn't metal. And it has the same stainless steel in the slide and the aluminum in the frame. But with the Legion series, SIG did away with the final bits of polymer by replacing the plastic trigger and main spring housing with metal parts. So that was an added benefit to it, as well as they have this like Cerakote finish and it's anti-snag finish. So it makes it much smoother for you to carry a worrying about like friction coming in and out or carrying it on your person. I really like the new Legion series because um, I think it's actually prettier. They, on their G10 grips, they have the Legion series logo and stuff on the top and they replaced the sites with the new x-ray three sites that they're putting on to everything. The other reason if I did buy this 938, I would get the Legion series is because the magazine was switched out and I would feel more comfortable carrying it because I do know that some people have actually had problems with this magazine for this 938. They were having some problems with failure to feed. A lot of people were thinking it could have been actually the gun itself and it really wasn't the gun. It was the magazine. Now, people who have had this P938, they did find a solution for the magazine, and that was to switch it out with that Kimber Micro 9 single action only pistol. And the magazines are remarkably close to one another in shape, size, you know. And that seems to be a good fix for people who were having problems with the magazine for this one. But now that SIG, you know, even changed the mag well to all metal, it allows for the, your magazine to come in and out better. And I'm assuming that it eliminated whatever problems some people were having with their magazines and failures to feed. Now, when I went to shoot this gun, I was, how do I say? I was disappointed that I loved shooting it 
so much because I'm not in the market for another pistol. Not for a while, I don't need any more, but I shot this and it was really, really fun to shoot. Um, that's another difference that I'm looking forward to trying out in the Legion series is they replace the curved trigger with a flat trigger. It allows for that smooth, crisp, 90 degree angle. It really, really makes this P938 your ultimate mini 1911. If you like shooting 1911s and you want to carry a small version of it, here you are people. This is it. This 938 had less recoil than my 365. For me, to me, I'm not one of these people that can tell you exactly, you know, how everything shoots and what's different. You know, I'm not, I'm not that person. I'm just a regular gal learning about firearms on my journey and sharing it with you guys. One thing I do love more about my P365 is the trigger guard. You can see is larger. Can you see how much larger that trigger guard is? And I think that's another thing I like about it is that it doesn't matter how large your hand is, you can find this trigger guard and get your fingers in here. Let's see. Yeah, my P365 has a lot of recoil. Another thing that I do prefer with the 938 over this 365 is it's really hard for me, even though I've had this gun for a while, to rack this slide. So that is really tight for me. And when I go to rack this slide, it's that is a big difference, right? I just feel like it's like I'm, I'm comfortable with my gun, so I know what to expect when it comes to bringing my slide back, but it is considerably easier for me on this 938. And I like that. I just overall really enjoyed shooting. Now, I don't carry any single or double action pistols. All of mine are striker fired. So if you were to consider getting this 938, make sure you are comfortable knowing how to use a hammer, knowing how to use a safety, which are just extra steps for me that I really don't want. Now, we just talked about both of these micro compact pistols, and I'm probably gonna end up with this Legion series and I don't want to. I'm ashamed to say it. Should I be ashamed to say it? You really can't go wrong with either one of these. So your six hour P938 is often compared to, of course, your six hour P365. Well, that's because before there was a P365, it was the P938 or the P238. It's often compared to your FNS9 compact, not micro compact, but compact, and your Kimber micro nine single action. But then what you hear a lot of people talk about comparing it to is your Glock 43. And this is the Glock 43X. And this is actually the MOS version. This is a subcompact pistol. And we look at the specs on here, you have 6.5 inches in length, 5.04 inches in height, 1.1 inch wide. It's, I think it's 18.55 ounces. The barrel is 3.41 inches. And this magazine that's in here is 10. This is a 10 round magazine. And of course you can see that it is striker fired only. But tell me, why are we comparing a subcompact gun to a micro compact gun. What's the difference? When we talk about subcompact guns, the difference obviously is first in the size. A subcompact gun, the barrels are about three to four inches. They're usually made in the big three calibers, which is, you know, the nine millimeter, 40 and 45. And then the mag normally holds about eight to 12 rounds. Subcompact gun, which is what we might call a mouse gun or a pocket pistol, it's pretty much the same as a subcompact gun, but it's a little bit smaller. So the barrel length and grip length and height are normally the same as the subcompact pistol, but the width is often shrunk down from a double to a single or staggered stack. And these are also made in that in the big three calibers, primarily nine millimeter, 40 Smith & Wesson, your 45 ACP, and your 380 ACP. So this is more of a some gun versus no gun, but these guns are also very narrow to carry. Like I said, it's a little bit longer. If we compare this Glock to the P365, it's a little bit more comparable to me. I love the fact that your safety is built into your trigger. And I like that it has the texturized grip all the way around. 
I personally enjoy the sights on here. So I, I like the sights. They're very, you know, they're dovetailed into the pistol, the same as the P365 and Glock's X-Ray 3 sights. But I really like the fact that this is a single stack pistol and this subcompact, I personally feel more comfortable carrying. A lot of people told me, you gotta get a Glock. You want like the 17 or the 19. And honestly, I'm not a fan of either. I'm actually a 43X girl and I can't wait till I put some optics on it. I also have some other sites that were gifted to me by a really good friend of mine and I haven't installed them intentionally after all this time because I just wanted to actually do a video showing you guys how to install the sites on here. So when it comes to holding this gun, I feel like you got a lot more real estate on here in this, this beaver tail. I feel like for those people that are coming to me asking about what's a really good first gun that you can carry that's small, clearly a bigger gun, but it is very comparable in size. You know, you can change your magazines out on here. It has a really good trigger guard space, similar to the P365, and I, I honestly would recommend a Glock 43X. And I've been recommending this to several people lately, especially females. I think it's a good gun to have. Reliable, you know that Glock is reliable. You can't really go wrong. You can drop this thing out of a plane and it won't fire. And your safety is built into the trigger. And off the top, you don't really have to worry about if it can fit in your hands. So if I was going to choose a first time gun for someone who's new, I would choose this Glock. The same goes for bringing back the slide. It's actually easier for me to bring back the slide on this Glock than it is on my P365. And the easiest of all three is really the P938. If I was gonna be a person who's going to make a decision, there are some other things that, that I would definitely factor in. As much as I love shooting this gun, I, and I really do think I like shooting it more, but maybe I need to get back to the range before I let something like that come out of my mouth. But what I don't like about the 938 is the reassembly. That I feel is something that would deter me from buying it. Now, I don't know how the Legion series is and if they've changed anything in the reassembly. But we all know that the slide stop doubles as a disassembly pin. And if you don't put it in the exact right way, your guide rod could end up being stuck out and you can't figure out what to do. And another thing that I'm really, really, really not a fan of, and I really don't understand why SIG even does this, but you have to put the ejector down just enough for the slide to come over it. If you don't, it can bind into the frame you can bend it outward and it could be something that the operator can't fix on its own and then you have to send it into sick. So I'm not a fan of that. I don't really understand why they can't just make that easier somehow. And the third thing that I'm not a fan of is the guide rod is really short and the recoil spring is really long and it makes it awkward for you to put the guide rod and spring back into your slide. It's extremely hard to put it in for me. But I've seen some other people do it and they also have a bit of a challenge putting it back in carefully to make sure they don't bend it. Now, if you go look at my video on how to clean it, you'll see what I do to put it back in easier. You'll see what it takes for me to bring that ejector down. I just don't like the fact that it's not as easy to reassemble as some of these other firearms. When I think about the maintenance on the 938, I might be a little bit concerned that eventually I could possibly break the ejector and have to get it repaired and for what? So if, if it comes down to it and I was to choose between the SIG P365 and the SIG P938, if I had to choose just one off the top, I love shooting this gun, but I would have to go with my P365 just because it feels more comfortable in my hand. I like the control that I have of it. It's easy to clean. And I like the fact that the trigger housing is much wider as well. I also also, like I said, if, if I was to get the new Legion series, I know that SIG is putting those X-Ray 3 sights on all their newer guns. And of course you can switch them out, but you know, coming out of the box, I like that. But yeah, I think I have to go with my SIG P365. For someone that's looking for a everyday carry pistol and you're a newer shooter and you're not as comfortable, I, I highly recommend getting to the range and shooting this 
Glock 43X. I don't know why everyone tells me about Glock 17 and 19. Those just aren't for me. And that's why it's important for you to figure out what really works best for you. You know, make sure you know your gun laws, first of all, at the local, state, and federal levels. Make sure you know what your carry concealed laws and rules are. Always think about safety first, always. Read your manuals. I don't care if I get a manual for a computer or a clicker for a camera. I read every manual that I get. And everyone that knows me knows that. Read your manuals, talk to experts, go to your local gun ranges and ask the people that work there. Go and try and shoot your guns and see what feels best for you. I think it really all comes down to preference. That's another thing when it comes to having a safety on a gun. Do you wanna have that extra step to bring that down? And then if you don't carry one in the chamber, then you gotta rack it. You know, there's two steps now before you're gonna pull the trigger. Now you gotta aim it, you know? So it's all of those things in one. And I just think that you really should think about it. You really need to just figure out what works for you and talk to your experts and come here to YouTube University. And if you have any questions, you know, go ask around. Tell me what your experiences are with these three guns. If you had to choose between two micro compacts, what would you choose? The P938, the P365. If you had to choose from all three, including this Glock 43X, what would you choose? I know I talked about some of the things that I don't like about the 938, as well as some of the things I don't like about the P365. But tell me, have you had problems with this gun? Have you had problems with failure to feed, with the ejector, this slide stop assembly, with the reassembly? And if so, would you think that would deter you from buying it again? Once again, if it came down to it uh, and I had to choose from the two micros, yeah, I stick with my P365 primarily because of reassembling. I'm a person that cleans my gun often. So I go to the range and shoot, I'm gonna clean it. So if you like this video, please click like, click subscribe, share, tune in, go down in the comments and let me know what you think about these three firearms. If you had to choose between the two micro compacts, that P938 and that P365, which one would you go with? If you had to choose from all three, would you go with the Glock? Did you have any problems with any of these? Let us know so that we can all learn together as we're on this journey. Thank you so much, everybody, for helping me reach my first thousand subscribers and that's a huge deal for me. You guys got me there. I wasn't sure how this journey was gonna go. You guys are sitting there and you're supporting and you're engaging and I don't know what I'd do without that. It pushes me, me want it to encourage people to continue being safe and responsible gun owners by cleaning their firearms and getting the proper training. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me and ask questions and share information. It really makes all the difference. A lot of us are just regular people like me who don't know everything about a gun, but I wanna encourage people to continue to seek the knowledge they need. I hope that you continue to enjoy my content and thank you for your patience with me as I learn how to film, edit, put things together, tack some music on, but I definitely did wanna make the effort to put out good content. I'll be more consistent in the near future. I'm just really grateful that there's so many enthusiasts out out here and people who really understand that the importance of owning a gun is being a responsible owner primarily through training but also from what I'm encouraging the most and that is to clean your firearms. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all of your time and support and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.